you know, I should really follow up on this. I'll be blunt, I had zero plans on making this making of. While I did write up and promoted a full blog entry discussing my process for a summer course in July, the thought of making it into a video never came into consideration given finals, spending time with family and friends in August, and preparing for my final semester of university, which is now in swing as of this recording. However, seeing how little people actually read my entry according to blogger statistics, it just feels wrong not to make it into a proper video since this assignment basically got a perfect mark and had a heap of extra detail I wasn't able to include due to a word limit. Plus, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging while I disappear from the internet until next year and end up being forgotten by the algorithm, cause who knows if it'll ever bless me again. So. For this video, I'll be reading through my blog entry word for word, add extra points that I initially wanted to include, and showcase some of the theory and techniques I use in my informative essays in general. Basically a director's cut. Enough exposition, let's go. Okay, I'll admit that the only reason I'm even making a blog post like this is for a content creation course I'm taking this summer semester. I'm not the biggest fan of blogging because I won't be able to convey the information I want to share to the best of my ability through this format, with only words and supplementary images. However, it could just be the result of burnout from all the 3000 plus word essays and papers I've written over the past few years during my undergraduate studies, and a couple complete video scripts that were ultimately scrapped due to time constraints on high workload, but we don't mention those. Since I'm required to do this, I might as well take the time to spill some details on my creative process regarding my most watched and ambitious projects so far. The fossil Pokemon, and how to buff them. With science! The concept behind the project should be blatantly obvious from the title. Attempting to buff the fossil Pokemon according to what we know of their real life inspirations based on published scientific literature. Incredibly specific, I know, but something I thought was worth pursuing both as a means of injecting new ideas in a pre-existing genre, buffing Pokemon to be more viable in a competitive setting, as well as a unique form of science communication. I briefly mentioned these in the video's introduction, but I want to emphasize them again as they address some criticisms I have with both types of content. For the former, I've seen buff proposals that either A. Grant Pokemon options that don't mesh with their design and or how the designers intended them to be piloted, B. Have been commonly brought up before and retreads worn ground, or C. As caught on by commenters like Captain Marsh, Roy Dadado, and others, overloading them with new tools that are guaranteed to make them immediately viable. In my opinion, incorporating a high level of nuance into the discussion through specialized knowledge can make your arguments compelling and fresh. Yeah, there were several things I had in mind with these critiques. This is not to put myself on a high horse, but there are times when I watch buffing Pokemon videos where one or all three of these points rear their heads and something inside me dies. For me, the one proposal that legitimately made me facepalm the hardest, and I'm sorry if you're watching this Liv Sama, it's nothing personal, I just love this Pokemon and the animal it's based on, was... Technician Tyrantrum. D don't get me wrong, I understand the competitive reason since this loaded dice set is ridiculously strong, but you mean to tell me that history's most massive and powerful terrestrial carnivore, which possessed one of the most formidable bites in the animal kingdom, powerful enough to make bone explode, would be best used to chuck rocks at its adversary. Even still, Tarantum can't handle a wrench to even try to be a technician. But you get my point, right? I could go on mentioning more examples, so I'll spare you, but point being, from my more scientific perspective, it's all about striking that right balance between logic and impact. Does this addition thematically fit with the Pokemon's design origins? And does this addition actively contribute to the Pokemon's intended playstyle? It is also why, despite being considered in earlier planning stages, Armaldo and Anorith were granted tough claws over compound eyes because the former was more impactful overall while also still fitting the visual design. Okay, moving on. In terms of science communication and paleontology, the two aspects I personally feel are lacking across many channels I follow are engagement and presentation. I of course do acknowledge that not every channel needs to look like a masterpiece or sound like an Oscar winning performance to present scientific information, especially if uploads need to be frequent. But there have been a few times where I have legitimately fallen asleep while watching something that would otherwise greatly interest me. Okay, maybe that was a bit too harsh, but it has happened before. The main point here is that part of good SciComm isn't just the information you're presenting, it's also how you present it. There are many ways to do it, and I'll talk about my strategy more in the scripting and editing section, but keeping your audience engaged is critical to get your points across. 
as a prime example, just refer to the GOAT, Dr. Thomas Hulse Jr. He is a master at leveraging his humor and enthusiasm in his live lectures to one, keep the audience engaged, and two, make it memorable. Refer to the following. Here is a reconstruction to show how big baleen whales get. And if you are a graphic designer and you have an animal with a color in its name, use that damn color, blue whale. Never fails to make me giggle. <clears throat> Back to the reading. Thankfully, having experience in acting, I was a middle school theater kid, and being a paleontology and environmental science major with specialized knowledge certainly gave me an edge in executing this project. Of course, being a video centered around science communication, the end product is only going to be as good as the research you do and how you convey it to the audience. While I had ideas for each Pokemon I was going to cover based on what I knew offhand, preliminary research was still conducted to ensure I did not misunderstand the literature being referenced and find additional ideas to build upon. If you see my other videos, you'll know that I hold myself to a high standard in almost everything. But the research and delivery aspects of my work stand near the pinnacle of my priorities. In this day and age where misinformation can spread like wildfire, creators should be held accountable for what they share publicly, lest their words create a false perception. Need I say more about disinformation in the big 2025? The Blogger and Content Creator's Code of Ethics, closely based on the Code of Ethics for the Norwegian Press published by the Norwegian Press Association, lists out 12 overarching rules to follow, many of which, if not all, can be applied to science communication and associated press. Of particular relevance, 4. Tell the truth at all times, 7. Reveal your sources unless doing so can harm your sources, 8. Be critical of your sources and seek independent verification, 9. Always give credit where credit is due, and 10. Always preserve the intended meaning of a given statement. Of note, by the way, this paper by Brittany Barrowick is also a great guy for SciComm if you're interested. For each of the 67 sources I cited in the video's accompanying citation list, I made sure to read through the publication and relevant passages at least two or three times to make sure I got the interpretations made correct. And if available, I sought out the actual experts, master students, PhD candidates, among others, to verify I was getting things right. In special cases where I was aware of unpublished information, I also asked if it was acceptable to reference it. Oftentimes the answer was no, but it just goes to show the lengths I go through to ensure integrity in both aspects of social media and professional science, of which I personally believe everyone should be taught and strive for. I bring this up not only because it's relevant in the age of ugh, generative AI and disinformation, but also because I actually did seek out clarification on something for the project. Back in December of 2024, I got back in touch with paleobiologist Dr. Michael Pittman while I was home in Hong Kong for Christmas break. At the time, I knew of two publications regarding Microraptor from SVP 2023 that have since been published this April and July. I wanted to ask Pittman, who is an author on both of them, if I could use them as references in abstract form as they were relevant to my argument. He said to wait until they were published for the sake of confidentiality. I, of course, obliged, acknowledging the importance of secrecy in professional research. Again, refer to 7 in the Code of Ethics. Ultimately though, I didn't end up needing them since my other sources were more than sufficient to justify my rationale. There isn't much to be said about the scripting phase, as I kept the process loose and stuck to what had already worked for prior projects. Stay chill, don't sound forced, crack a couple jokes to maintain engagement, but never let up on sounding professional. Again, the acting classes and personal practice come in clutch for this sort of thing. One thing I had to constantly think about, however, was how the visuals would complement the script. To minimize the video's total duration, I actively avoided telling the viewer every bit of minutiae and let the accompanying figures, text, and pointers provide relevant information. In fact, I actively designed the video so that viewers can pause and read the captions whenever necessary, without breaking the pace of the video. Because we all know attention spans these days are dwindling faster than national science funding in the United States. The captions also enabled me to consistently have an edit occur on screen at least once every 5 seconds to maintain the viewer's attention. A known strategy among many a content creator. Want to talk more about those captions quickly. The main inspiration for these captions comes from personal experience and observation. When I'm explaining scientific literature to others, often family and friends, I typically avoid using complex jargon and mentioning hyper-specific details as I know that is of higher level knowledge that they won't understand right away. 
However, since I'm using a visual medium, I felt that I can squeeze in extra details for people who want to learn more or would like some extra context and a figure to look at. There are of course times where I do feel obligated to verbalize minutiae, but it should not take up too much speaking time lest it upend the pacing. Besides, a picture speaks a thousand words, and figures play a crucial part in compartmentalizing a presentation and visualizing information. One recent example that encapsulates that point is the skeleton crew's Did Birds Inherit the Key to Flight from Their Dinosaur Ancestors, in which Dr. James Napoli supplemented his narration with 3D digital models of his own creation to actively show the bones and arm motions relevant to his publication. It's an excellent watch, would recommend subbing to them. And you probably know what I'm gonna say now, right? Like and subscribe on my end so you won't miss my next upload, whenever that might be. The entire video was edited in DaVinci Resolve, which, in my opinion, is the best free video editing software available, despite its learning curve. Each segment dedicated to each Pokemon was its own separate project before rendering, from which they were compiled into a single timeline. As you might have guessed from watching the video, it was very time consuming and a single timeline can resemble a city skyline once everything is completed. Granted, most of the video's production took place during school year which automatically meant I had less time on my hands. None of the editing techniques I used were groundbreaking to be honest. I mostly relied on keyframes, the transitions built into the software, and some basic animation principles for my avatar. Didn't want to waste even more time creating custom assets. About this avatar. I conceptualized it back in 2022 for a series that's currently on the eternal back burner. I've since refined it as my art style evolved and as more of my art friends drew various doodles of it. It wasn't until the university assignment video that I asked my friend and channel artist Turret to create digital versions of them for the intro and outro. I passed her the various references I made and some photos of myself and voila, here I am. All the individual pieces are kept in Corel Draw so that I can mix and match elements to create new expressions and frames with only a few key poses. It's a bit of a slog to get all the static frames given the sheer number of them, but well worth it in the end for an engaging centerpiece. And yes, in case you somehow didn't catch it by now, my avatar is a walking Ace Attorney reference. Why? That's a story for another time. Overall, I'm really proud of this video. Nearly a year's worth of dedication and refinement culminated into what is undoubtedly my best work yet. And I cannot thank you, the viewers, enough for your kind words, constructive feedback, and for simply watching it. I thought it would only peak around 4,000 views, but no, it's gonna eventually reach 50,000 sooner or later. And it did! My next large project will most likely not be Pokemon related or even come out this year as I'm going into my final semester in September funny how that turned out. But expect some Pokemon I like and how to buff them with science to eventually come out in 2026. In the meantime, expect some more YouTube shorts to be uploaded in the coming weeks and maybe some purely comedic stuff when September passes just to let YouTube know I'm still alive. With that, I'll see you guys then. HOLD IT! Come on, I had to do it at least once. But before you click off and do something else, I got one question for y'all before I return to the academic ether. Would you guys like to do a QA? and a I don't know, been thinking of doing one for a while to share stuff about myself and gauge my audience better for future projects based on what you guys ask. Let me know in the comments down below. Now, for real this time, I'll see you guys then.